Hi everybody, it is May 9, 2019. Unbelievable what is taking place. And more flooding coming to an awful lot of areas that have been hit for a very long time. Well, it's going to continue throughout the weekend, starting tonight. Thunderstorms. Okay, I'll get into that, but uh, uh, let me start with what is taking place in Greece Blue again. Heavy. Again, this is Greece again. Flash flooding, severe weather in Eastern Europe. Unbelievable. And you know what? People still are not waking up to what is taking place. And I posted videos on the flooding that was taking place in Greece. They're being hit repeatedly as well. Paraguay. Emergency in Paraguay. After flooding from torrential rains, declared a state of emergency along the border with Argentina as rains swell rivers and cause floods. 40,000 Paraguayans forced to evacuate their homes and one Paraguayan said the government treats us like animals. It should have rolled up its sleeves and built a defensive barrier along the coast to avoid the waters from reaching low-lying flood-prone slums and it didn't. Well, guess what? <clears throat> We're all in this together and no government is helping the people we're not getting any help from the National Emergency Office. Listen to this. I observed the magnitude of the flooding and damages firsthand in a flyover with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers a month ago. The situation on the ground is no different today. It is truly heartbreaking to see. While the full extent of damage can't be assessed until the floodwaters recede and residents can return to their home. From a month ago. Mississippians, along with those in the Midwest, experience similar challenges, need relief also. I commend the Appropriations Committee Chairman and Vice Chairman for their continued efforts to reach an agreement on an emergency funding measure to help individuals and communities recover from natural disasters. I am especially grateful for their willingness to consider expanding the scope of the legislation to address the 2019 natural disasters. To consider expanding. To consider expanding. Hey, you reached an agreement, uh, but th this is from flooding that occurred a month ago and still people are not able to get in to assess the damage to their homes. Great Lakes water levels at precipice of a disaster with flooding occurring or imminent in New York, Ohio, and Michigan. Multiple Great Lakes are at dangerously high water levels putting communities around Lake Ontario and Lake Erie on edge. A massive winter snowpack and wind-driven rain has contributed to the water levels. Now, we want to show you something. Marquette, Michigan has seen over 225 inches of snow this season, and on top of that, over a foot of rain has fallen for multiple cities over the Great Lakes. Officials in New York State warned that residents on the coast of Lake Ontario should prepare for possible major flooding in the coming days. The Army Corps of Engineers predicts Lake Superior and Lake Erie will soon reach potentially record-breaking high water levels coming up and flooding has already begun. In Oak Harbor, Ohio, flood water is inching dangerously close to homes and in Monroe County in southeast Michigan, firefighters rescued residents trapped in their homes. Lakes Michigan and Lake Huron are also clocking in above average but are not expected to break any records quite yet. Lots of flooding. Oh, man, water levels on the Great Lakes are running high. New York State is bracing for flooding along the shoreline of Lake Ontario, 
Lakeshore flooding is already occurring in northwestern Ohio and southern eastern Michigan. And yeah, all along the shoreline of Lake Ontario. You're looking at disaster. That's according to Governor Andrew Cuomo, National Guard on standby, Ontario, Canada, Toronto Islands, properties along the shoreline, more flooding coming your way, Port Clinton, Oak Harbor, Fairport Harbor were among the northwestern Ohio towns dealing with lakeshore flooding on Wednesday. The only way to get around Port Clinton was by boat or paddleboard. Southeastern Michigan, residents of Monroe County's Berlin Township became trapped in their homes by high water along the shore of Lake Erie on Wednesday. Firefighters used a boat to rescue those who were stranded. This is Estrel Beach in Berlin Township, Michigan. Six month bulletin put out by the Army Corps of Engineers. You got six months of possible flooding. Because the Great Lakes are above average. They've received above average precipitation in the month of April, 24% um, more than ever. Climate change is the reason, yes, climate change. Climate change. Oh, it is uh, increasing the intensity of the most extreme rainfall events. These events are quite consistent with what scientists have been expecting for a long time with long-term climate change patterns. Can't, we can't seem to, I hate it that lies are winning. Taylor, Michigan, Wednesday, May 1, May 1. 2019. Look at that flooding. Okay. This kind of flooding all over. You got it in Greece. You got it in Paraguay. You got it uh, in so many states. In the United States. You got it in Canada. We never saw rain like this. You're going to tell me that this is climate change, global warming, which would come about if it was actually true climate change, global warming. The changes would not happen like overnight. It wouldn't happen with radical changes overnight. It would be incremental changes. Michigan. Where Allie Hoxie is live in Harrison Township for us this morning. Allie, how's the surf right now? Well, already in the past hour or so, the winds are picking up here. Take a look behind me. You can and take a look at the trees that don't seem to be moving at all. This wind, but the, the, the surf is certainly moving, but not. I don't see the trees moving. So let's move back just a little bit. Already in the past hour or so, the winds are picking up here. Take a look behind me. You can see where those waves are hitting the dock, hitting the shoreline where people live, the water rising up into people's home. And just here in the past hour, take a look over here. We're starting to see this water pool. I'm at the DNR boat launch. You can see where the water is meeting the shoreline, breaking through the shoreline, and then coming right here and pooling all around into this parking lot area. And that's the big concern that's happening on the roads here in Harrison Township. Now, there's a chance of winds anywhere between 15 to 25 miles per hour already here in Harrison Township. We saw waters in the people's yards, in their front and backyards. We saw waters on the roads as we were driving in, and the concern is that that will continue to grow. Another eight inches of water is predicted for today. The township supervisor is telling us he's not seen water levels this high in 30 years. He says the water has been rising for weeks now. So a whole lot more flooding is coming. Minnesota got about a foot of snow just yesterday.
internet, I'm Matt Brickman. This is the 734 from WCCO. It is May. Does not look like it though. Take a look at this nonsense. Duluth set a record with more than eight inches of snow yesterday. That is the most. It has snowed on a day in May since we've been keeping weather records. So more than 140 years and we literally have no record of this ever happening before in the month. In the month of May and eight inches in Duluth and it was 11.5 inches in other parts of Minnesota. Colorado got hit with an awful lot of snow. Commencement uh, ceremonies in Denver will be, well, I guess they're going to have to move those ceremonies because of the snow that they got. A flash flood watch is in effect starting today at 1 p.m. and continuing through Saturday, uh, 7 p.m. And where are we? Houston, Galveston, Texas. You have the forecasts. You have mucho rain coming after you've received mucho rain already. This is hit hard Tuesday. The other was Kingwood, and there's still a lot of saturated areas there, and that has families worried sick. If a massive amount of rain falls in Kingwood tonight, it could be catastrophic. Our Brandon Walker covered the flooding fallout in Kingwood yesterday. He's back in that community tonight, and Brandon, a lot of nervous people there as we wait for this storm. Yeah, Dominica, that's the key word here, waiting. We are in the Elm Grove neighborhood, which saw those 10 inches of water. And so today, you've got people gutting out their homes. That's a door frame right there. They're watching and they're waiting for tonight with more weather on the way. It's what Tracy Ferris and Juliana Shoney felt was the right thing to do. We just want to try to do what we can. They're teachers, and in every sense of what that means, today they took their classroom to the flood weary, spreading a lesson of kindness, dropping off buckets of cleaning supplies, other essentials too, to those cleaning up. Water was over my waist, like John Reedy. His home, most of the Elm Grove neighborhood, ground zero for Tuesday's flooding. Crews have gutted that damage just in time, potentially for round two. I think what we had was eight to ten, something like that. That's what I picked up. If we get eight to ten inches, yeah, I mean, but I just don't think, I mean, the odds of that happening are that good. The ten inches dumped Tuesday have drained in this neighborhood that never flooded, and the creek that runs behind Reedy's home is at a good level. Neighbors say they're watching and waiting as our first responders. Precinct 4 Constable Mark Herman showed Channel 2 two of the new rescue boats perched. Just, their fleet includes five tons. Fabulous. New rescue boats. Oh, man. Um, yeah. I have never seen it as bad as it has been. And I don't, this isn't going to stop. They have ramped up the weather, using it as a weapon, and it's only accelerating. I think that you know, they're getting impatient and they're just throwing everything at us now. There's no way to stop any of this. <laughs> I, it's amazing. Round of severe storms slam into south overnight with heavy rains and windows. Ripping walls completely off an apartment building. Ginger is here with more. Good morning, Ginger. Good morning, Michael. I wish I could tell you that Shreveport, Louisiana is the only place we're seeing images like this where people are walking through water, cars are submerged, but it's not. Even this morning, flash flood alerts from Corpus Christi to just outside of Memphis. Tornado warnings embedded there, too. At least four new tornado reports in the latest outbreak. Overnight, flash flooding swallowing cars and homes in Shreveport, Louisiana, forcing water rescues. Four to five inches of rain falling in just a few hours. In Arkansas, severe storms ripping the roof off this apartment building. Four people injured, two of them by flying debris. The extent of the damage to the building uh, is extensive. So when you look at the, uh, the damage and, and not to have more people hurt, we're very blessed. In Little Rock, it was the inundated streets, water rushing around homes, and the Kansas Turnpike near Wellington, underwater. This car washed off the road. 
plus Sayre, Oklahoma, water right up to the highway. Heavy rain swamping parts of Texas, too, and new video from several Houston neighborhoods underwater. Many drivers were forced to abandon their cars or attempt to push them out. So in this moisture-laden outbreak of storms are better. Louisiana. And there are other videos on YouTube, na uh, neighborhoods, Louisiana, lots of streets are flooded. And can uh, this is, where is this? Canton, Missouri, Gregory Landing, Missouri, Alexandria, Missouri. Farmland. Farmers have been devastated absolutely devastated this it, it just I mean every day it looks like it's just expanding the flooding look at this I don't see how a lot of people are going to be able to recover from this based on how, well, the farmers, I mean, their land sitting in so much water for long periods of time, it's planting season except for farmers affected by major flooding. Missouri River swamped Scott Olson's land in March flooding tore holes in his fields and left mounds of debris. He's not entirely sure he'll plant corn or and soybeans this season on the flooded acres. How do you fix that stuff? It takes a lot of money and a lot of time and something nobody has. Time, maybe, but not the money anymore. So do I fix it and try to plant, uh, not knowing whether I've got more water coming or not, because if I get more water coming on there, it'll undo everything I did, plus wipe out all the crops that I just put there. It's a decision, farmers, across the Midwest, especially in Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois, will have to make as planting season is in full swing. So even the farmers who uh, have not experienced tremendous damage what have the forecast been flooding of these rivers throughout the summer? So are they going to be putting in money and time with in the back of their minds? All of this could be destroyed from flooding. Well, this is our, this is our life now. The local farmers are hurting financially because of flooding on the Mississippi River. News 8's Scott Marins tells us how the delay in barge season is affecting farmers. Lisa, normally barge season would be well underway by now, but so far only one barge has passed through Lock and Dam Number 7, and that was back in April. The high water is making it too dangerous for the barges to come through, and the delay in shipping means farmers can't get paid. Farmers are very prideful people and we don't like to complain and we don't like to go and ask for help. They may not say it out loud, but the delay in barge season has many local farmers worried. As spring bills come up, people or farmers like to get rid of their product. Most farmers aim to have their corn planted by early May, but many of them need money to make that possible. With us in the continued downturn that we have been for the last four or five years now, a lot of farmers are really needing that cash right now to buy their inputs, seed fertilizers, chemicals, um, things like that. Trains and trucks are helping to move some of their produce, but it's not enough. Trains and trucks can't sim simply can't keep up with uh, the demand that's out there to get it to the market where it needs to go. Okay, so even the farmers who were not flooded are affected by what's happening on the you know these rivers because 
the barges are just not coming uh, through. And, you know, all right, how often do you hear now people saying, no matter where they live, it doesn't matter, city officials are not doing their job, and we're seeing flooding of our streets over and over again? Once again, here we go. This is an alley on the south side of Chicago. Instead of cars driving through and garbage cans floated by, residents are wondering why their tax dollars can't be used to fix the flooding. CBS 2's Vince Girasoli takes us to a neighborhood full of frustration. Boots are needed to slosh down this alley in the Mount Greenwood neighborhood. So this is a common occurrence that happens every time it rains. Um, our alley gets flooded, the water comes up into the garages. Water comes up and the garbage cans come down. This happens every single time it rains. Loading Fritos side by side with a ramen noodles package and a buoyant banana and bottle. All that garbage won't just disappear on its own. This will probably take three days, four days before it dries up and then we'll have a muddy mess for a couple days. We'll have to come out here and clean up all the trash out of it and, uh, you know, let it dry completely. So I'll show you the deepest part where it goes, which is up here. Ryan Franzen is fed up with the Alley Turn River 2. It's aggravating. It's aggravating. You just kind of learn to suck it up and deal with it, but it's not right. We don't care how it gets fixed. Um, we just need it fixed. We do our part, pay our taxes. We're just asking for a little bit of help. That's all. A little help. Yeah, look. I, I, <laughs> we get screwed all the time by our government officials. Americans, you need to really wake up. You pay your taxes. That money is going somewhere, but it's not going uh, to uh, for the services that you think your tax money is going to. And this is going to continue and it's going to worsen. It's going to get so bad that Americans are just, I guess, um, hopefully they'll get outraged uh, and begin to question their city officials, their government officials. Um, you know, m much of the taxes that Americans are paying, uh, well, we know taxes it's theft. It's theft of your money, but it's so theft when you pay the taxes in your community and you are not getting the services that we once got. Well, now, forget about it. They don't seem to be, they don't care. They don't, look, they don't care about you. They don't care about you. So communities have to come together and start caring and start thinking about how you are going to uh, survive. Mississippi. So many trees are down all over the place. I will link below to everything and uh, you know I was watching this video and I believe this is in Texas. Um, this man is just driving through May 8 what five inches of rain in 12 hours looks like. Well we got about, about five, five inches, inches of rain, rain overnight. overnight. Last night, uh, so I'm going to kind of take you for a little tour of the country around here. Some of the neighbors were going down Bushnell Road. This is cow pasture over here. So it's not, not good, but, you know, it could be worse. Uh, this is cotton field over here. It's nothing sticking up out of it either. It's pretty 
terrible. All right, I will link below, and you, he just drives through and shows how many farms, and I guess ranches as well, are flooded out. And more rain is coming. Are threatening, threatening local, local independence, independence business, and it, it isn't, isn't the first time. In fact, 41 Action, Action News has visited Fairmount Liquor through at least four different, different floods, and the problem still isn't fixed. fixed. 41, 41 Action News reporter Sarah, Sarah Plate joins us live from Independence near 24 Highway. Sarah. Yeah, yeah we, we come out here to talk to Thelma Jordan, Jordan every time it floods, if not for any other reason, to try to hold officials accountable for promising to fix these issues. And we asked the City of Independence and Sugar Creek for updates, and neither can give us a clear answer. Four years later, eight floods, and it's crazy. Thelma Jordan puts up a clever, if not sarcastic, sign in her liquor store every time there's heavy rain. Today it says, rain, rain, go away. Will we survive flood number eight? So if we have the rain they're predicting, I will be flooded tomorrow and close again. Jordan, whose business is in Independence, is suing the man who owned a car lot across Highway 24 on the Sugar Creek side, along with the city of Sugar Creek, the city of Independence, and MoDOT for not fixing the broken culvert underneath the road, restricting the creek water flow. The broken culvert caused a hole to open up in the car lot parking lot, which was then filled in with gravel. I had hope that because they they, came, they said there was some things they were working on, there was possibilities, but all of a sudden, all the possibilities are gone. Last all right. Getting it? Are you getting it? Yeah, I, I got a comment from someone in Kansas, and the comment read, no one cares. And you know what? <sighs> Care is seen. It, it's not... It, it, Care through words means nothing. Action needs to be taken. Action. Action shows care. I was thinking earlier this afternoon, you know, if every adult American, let's say we've got about, I don't know, even uh, 200 adult Americans in our country, if they just donated a dollar each every month, that would be $200 million every 30 days that could be used to help all of the people who are hurting and who do not see via FEMA, uh, government assistance, Red Cross, or all of these uh, actors and actresses, these famous people who do these, you know, uh, telethons and get like $50 million. They don't see the money. Why can't we figure something out here? All right, let me just show you. So these are the storms on radar. And I came over here about an hour ago. And there are already uh, looking quite different, especially in Texas. So are you? experiencing now in East Tex Texas and Houston area thunderstorms because that's what they were calling for and thunderstorms uh, throughout throughout um, the weekend in the south in the south it doesn't look like much happening up here in the north. So all of this is manufactured by man. Now look at it on satellite. I mean, it doesn't even look like the satellite that we used to see. You know, all of this rain, it looks like it's stretching up and but this is the high frequency heating that I've spoken of very often. Looks like more storms in Florida as well. So let's just do a quick uh, composite radar check. 
And yes, my computer is quite slow. You can see, you can see, I, I, I mean, <laughs> And we've got our meteorologist saying nothing about, look at this. I mean, it looks like uh, a freaking light show or something. All of the, all of these very defined circular lines. That's the Doppler Nexrad radar spewing its high frequency heating controlling these storms, intensifying, manipulating, steering. Well, love to hear from all of you, uh, especially in these states, Michigan, Ohio, Kansas, um, my God, Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, Minnesota, Michigan, how are you guys doing? New Yorkers, Northern New Yorkers, how are you doing? It's, it's unbelievable that we are living this. But we are living it. We are living it. 